Why do people wear cross necklaces? It is commonly known that cross necklaces, cross earrings, and basically anything with crosses is a very popular option for accessories, not only for subcultures like goth or alternative fashion, but also in modern minimalistic fashion. But how does a symbol that most people recognize as a symbol of Christianity become a common option of jewelry design, whether the person who wears it and designs it is Christian or not? Also, since when did people start wearing Latin or Christian crosses as jewelry? And that's the topic we are going to talk about today. Brief history of Latin crosses. As you may know, a Christian cross is mostly seen as a representation of faith and a reminder of the sacrifice of Jesus. However, the cross might not be the symbol of Christianity at first. I mean, of course, there were some cultures using this symbol before the Christians, because it's not like drawing a symbol with two lines is that complicated. For example, there are theories said that a cross was also a symbol of Mesopotamian deity associated with vegetation, fertility, and the cycle of life, death, and rebirth, named Tammuz or Jimuzid in Sumerian mythology. Another interesting point is that the Roman execution tool could have various shapes and forms, and Jesus might be crucified on any of these shapes, like a stake, a T-shaped tool, an X cross, or it could be the Latin cross, as people would normally think of. People have their own theories, of course, but I guess we'll never be able to pinpoint exactly about the shape. But one thing, one thing is for sure: the Christian cross was not a symbol of Christianity when Jesus was alive. Well, obviously, since the symbol is tied to the story of his execution, but then when did crosses become a Christian thing? Before the cross became a Christian symbol in the fourth century, people might use symbol like fish or ichthus, an anchor, or a shepherd carrying a sheep as representations of their faith. They used this kind of symbol partly because Christianity wasn't really legal in Roman Empire before the fourth century. Still, there are some records of Christians using crosses as their symbol before then. For example, around the second century, there was a record by Tertullian, a Christian author, explaining to those who call Christian devotees of the cross that pagan was no less worshipped images of woods. And he explained further about Christian cross in his book *Ad Nationis*. And then, now we're talking about the fourth century. We have been mentioning Emperor Constantine became a Christian and made the religion legal. And that was when crosses became widely accepted as a symbol of Christianity. Okay, so now we have a very, very, very brief story of the origin of the Christian cross. Now let's talk about our main focus. Crosses as accessories. Around the second century, early Christians began wearing cross necklaces even before the legalization in the fourth century. At the start, the crosses could be some bronze pendants, and there are bronze cross pendants found in the ancient Roman areas. Then, over time, wealthier Christians commissioned crosses made from precious metals and gemstones. But there is also an event, aside from the Roman Empire era, that makes people wear crosses more, which is the plague. During the Black Death or the plague in 1665 to 1666. People believe that wearing a cross, especially crosses with two bars, might protect them from the mysterious forces causing the deadly plague. Also, people usually painted red or white crosses on the door of the house that had plague victims as well. So, based on the story of the Roman Empire and the story of the plague, at least now we are sure that crosses are not just some recent fashion trend. And here are some examples of paintings featuring people with cross accessories from centuries ago. The first example is in the portrait of Anne of Cleves during 1538 to 1539. The queen was wearing a cross. Another is from the 17th century. It's the portrait of Isabella Clara Eugenia of Spain, Archduchess of Austria, by Franz Popu. Popu? How to pronounce the name again? I'm sorry. And here's another example in the painting of Emperor Pedro the First of Brazil. In the picture, he also wore a crucifix cross necklace on his deathbed. Or even this picture of a young lady playing guitar by Julie Vaupelier around the 19th century has a cross as an accessory. And when we fast forward to nowadays, there are also many, so many iconic looks with crosses as accessories. Princess Diana, Princess of Wales, 
she had a gold amethyst cross suspended on a pearl rope. This cross was known as the Atala Cross. It was later sold to Kim Kardashian. So since people have been wearing cross necklaces for centuries, including nobles, celebrities, well, it is not so surprising why it has become so common for people nowadays. And also considering that many brands like Gucci, Givenchy, or even more affordable brands like H&M incorporate crosses into their designs. To be more specific with my examples, Laurie Rodkin has made crosses a prominent part of her jewelry brand since the 1980s. Also, Theo Fennell has quite a unique cross necklace design, especially this purple sapphire and diamond limited cross necklace. A cross necklace is not the only popular accessory with Latin cross. Another iconic item is cross earrings. Well, I'm not sure exactly when people started wearing them. George Michael certainly made the single dangle cross earrings so cool from the 1980s to nowadays. And I think a very popular option for male earrings is also a cross. Crosses are very prominent in subculture, especially with goth. So that's why we'll also be talking about why many goths also wear crosses as a part of their outfit. Well, a lot of people are curious about the relationship between goth and crosses out of curiosity. I understand that it might be a bit confusing for some people because not everyone acknowledged that goth are not anti-Christian or anti-any religion. But actually, goth or gothic ideology is just about appreciating darker things in life. So the concept of death, for example, is not at all a terrible concept. And for me, this is how I think I appreciate darker things in life. For example, if you don't appreciate death, how would you truly appreciate life? Life without death is quite meaningless. Or, you know, for some people, it might not be something so deep. Like, they just find serenity in the night and the dark. And goth music often vibes with that idea pretty well. So what I'm trying to say here is that it's not weird for some Christians to be into God's subculture and it's not weird for God to be Christians. And if you think that there are no God's songs that could reflect Christian beliefs, then you might be quite wrong. But before we talk about music parts, let me explain something a little bit. Gothic music icons like Robert Smith from The Cure and Peter Murphy from Bauhaus had Catholic backgrounds, so they might have left their faith in Christianity behind. Some of their songs like The Holy Hour by The Cure and Stigmata Mater by Bauhaus were inspired by Christian concepts. Oh, but by the way, though Peter Murphy left Christianity, he converted to Sufism, an Islamic mysticism which means he is still religious while being goth. And apart from that, some goth rock bands are considered Christian rock as well. For example, Dead Artist Syndrome and The Awakening. Even though when we talk about Christian goth bands, people tend to think of Christian gothic metal or symphonic metal more like Necromance and Undish. Aside from the music part, there are also various reasons why goth like to incorporate crosses in their outfit. The first obvious reason is that crosses are known as execution device. And this idea of execution could be quite morbid and could be a bit appealing to God. So, you know, why not? Also, a lot of Gothic motifs derive from the style of Gothic architecture, which was used to build and decorate churches and cathedrals. So, you know, finding some crosses motifs is not out of place. And as I said, some gods are Christians, so they can wear it for religious purposes or, you know, sometimes for fashion. And for those who are not religious, cross necklaces, earrings, or patterns might be worn for aesthetic purposes. Let's wrap everything up. In the end, people have their own reasons for wearing crosses, religious or not. Some might wear the Christian cross as a representation of their faith and a reminder of sacrifice of Jesus. Some might wear it for protection from evil spirits. Some gothic subcultures might wear it since the cross is linked to various gothic motifs and because the cross has a darker tone hints in its meaning. But if you're wondering if it's appropriate to wear cross necklace or earrings outside of religious reasons or not, um, I don't know. 
I mean, this is such an opinion-based matter and I am not the judge of things. But of course, I'll tell you guys what I think. Well, personally, I would avoid wearing crosses, but I don't think it's absolutely inappropriate to wear crosses as an accessory as long as you don't do it in a derogatory way or being offensive to the religion. So, you also can tell us your opinion about wearing cross accessories, or if you have noticed some other reasons why the cross is a prominent symbol in many outfits, especially goth and alternative fashion. And that is the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you have an amazing day. Since this is the last video this year, I wish each and every one of you a wonderful time. Thank you for being with me this year, I really appreciate it. Take care, I hope to see you on the next journey.